During today's show, we talked about one of the most controversial and familiar concepts of being black in American workplaces, code switching. And as we reported, a recent Harvard Business Review article features data that confirms what most black people already know, that code switching can be necessary to access gainful employment in most American companies, and it's certainly required to move up, ascend, and gain more money and power in these spaces. Believe me, I've been black in America my entire life, so I overstand this way of thinking. However, I have made the very deliberate, personal, and high-stakes decision to refuse to code switch at this point in my life and career. But I'm not going to act all holier than thou, because there was a time in the not-so-distant past where I was a master code switcher. And frankly, I'd do it again in order to make the same strides that have recently put me in position to freely choose to reject code switching today. So let me walk you through some of the elements of my journey to my newfound freedom and rejection of one of Black America's most consistent shared experiences. Now, when I worked at Fox News, I was at a much different place than when I was cast to join the Real Housewives of New York City. And my modes of disruption and my willingness to code switch reflect these different positions. Let me pause for a second. I keep using this word disruption. Let me say a bit about it. I use this term because, believe me, when you make the decision to deviate from standards of whiteness and conditions of white normalcy and comfort in any way, you will be, by default, causing a disruption. And let's be clear, there is a cost to that disruption. Whether or not you are positioned to carry that cost becomes a very real and a very personal decision and one that you should make with as much full knowledge as possible. Now, it will be hard to completely assess and anticipate what the exact cost of your disruption could be, but you would be well advised to consider the maximum impact. That could mean working in an openly hostile environment, it could be a demotion, or even being terminated. To that point, When I was on the Real Housewives of New York City, I was much better positioned to opt out of code switching than at previous points in my career. I felt freer to make that choice because I was in a sturdier professional and financial situation. I had more credibility. I had more visibility. And both of those are powerful tools to combat the inherent cost of opting out of white comfort. So going from my posture at FNC to Roni, it was slow and it was gradual, but it was strategic. So over time, I became louder and more overt in my choice to center blackness on air, my choice to bring all of who I am everywhere I go. Now, while this was the right choice for me, know that it ultimately did cost me my position on Real Housewives. And I had that baked into the cake. I was fully prepared for that outcome. In fact, I expected it. And I would make the same choice again and again and again. Because I simply can no longer and I will not any longer tolerate the requirements of white comfort. Not at work, not at home, or anywhere else in this world. But beware, this is not a choice that I even recommend for everyone. Nor is it a choice that everyone can or should make but it remains the only choice for me.